anyway, um, I've always wanted to come to Lamb. I've known about it for 12 years. I always thought it was the coolest thing because it was the spirit connection with the Holy Spirit. And a few years ago, I asked him to come. I mean, we, we didn't struggle in our marriage really uh, this bad until this last year for a number of reasons. Um, and I'd asked him to come before, and he's like, no, I don't need that. I, I, I'm good, you know. And I was just like, ugh. You know? So um, I didn't talk to him for four months, and then I, I did talk to him. And I said, well, I'd, I can spend time with you if we go to Lamb. <laughs> so, <laughs> So he agreed to sign up, and then we walked up the door and we read the little uh, sign out there, and it said, you know, emotional, uh, spiritual, and sexual uh, connection. He's like, oh. Oh, boy. And I said, yeah, I didn't tell you it was God's sex camp. (laughs) (laughs) Surprise! (laughs) See? You get rewards for doing things your wife wants to do. So Being obedient. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, we just connected on such wonderful levels. And um, one of the really profound things that happened is um, we've been getting along really good, but God allowed uh, an argument to happen through a nightmare that I had. And uh, so we woke up and started arguing about this nightmare. It was the weirdest thing. It was so demonic. And then... He turned it around and started praying with tears. And then I'm like, do you, this is at 1.30 in the morning. I'm like, do you smell fresh bread? It smells like there's bread baking. He's like, I do. i like, you do? I mean, this has only happened one other time in my life, I, you know, and I've been a Christian over 30 years, Pentecostal Christian, and it's only happened one other time. So I was like, okay, Jesus is here. And it just went on for like 20 minutes. I'm like, what does this mean? I fell asleep. I had another nightmare. Woke it up and, and uh, shared it with him. And we just started arguing. And this was the day of the conflict resolution. So one of the things that was not modeled to me was arguing. My parents never did. They were above that because they were educated. And so I thought it was too low class to argue. So I never would argue. Like... I would just be quiet and let them rant. Well, I decided to take a risk because I decided, do I want to win or do I want to be one, O-N-E? And I'm like, I don't want to be alone. I'm going to try this. So I did it. And then that was the spirit connection that, uh, that she did that day, was keeping things inside. And it's a very long story, but that was probably the biggest, one of the biggest breakthroughs for us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I had been married twice to the same woman over about a period of 30 years. Kids, granddaughter, you know, now we have more grandkids and even a great grandson. But I, at that point, you know, I had a business I was trying to, to salvage what had happened to the kids because we, we believed we'd had, a, at least I believed we'd had a Christian marriage. But I was not Pentecostal. <laughs> I was Baptist and evangelical, and, and uh, I never had or an understanding of the depth of what the Holy Spirit can do. And my kids convinced me that I was going to be pretty boring. And I, I worked a lot, poured a lot of time into the business, and uh, they said, Dad, you, you need to get online and, and find somebody that can tolerate you. And uh, I laughed, and I said, oh, well, I'll show you. So I got on eHarmony.com. And, uh, and I made sure that whoever I met would be at least 700 miles away and had no kids. So here this pops up and I'm going, oh, that's surely from the devil. She's too beautiful and she's way too young and she has three daughters and I was raised with all boys. But then I read what she wrote and I saw her heart. So that was, this has been a seven year journey in a, a, a uh, second marriage with her kids and our kids and i tell you what, I didn't know what I was getting into. I had no clue. I had no clue. So we've struggled. We've struggled. But you know, one thing that we know is that we've always loved each other, but we just were not equipped to deal with the the struggles that we were going to face when it came to uh, the kids and their issues. And uh, so a lot of that was coming to a head, and it was tearing us apart. 
And so she had suggested this, and I'll tell you what, the worst people to minister to are sometimes ministers. You know, been there, done that, we think we know about it, but we, we, uh, when, it, when it's happening to you, it's another story. And so I, I was obedient, because I was getting tired of being on exile, and, <laughs> and occasionally she'd let me have the van. But uh, I said, okay, I'll go. And uh, I've been learning a lot about humility, and especially a lot about dying to myself, and learning how to really love intimately. And uh, coming here and being here and watching what, and listening, listening, not talking all the time, but listening. It's always been hard for me. I was raised in a place where you're to be seen and not heard. And uh, I just see the love. Just this place is anointed. This ministry is anointed. I thank you too for being obedient to your calling. I bless every one of you, and I know that right now you guys have all been equipped and will be a blessing as you leave here to others. And I just want to, to tell anybody, if you're watching this testimony and you've gotten this far, be obedient, come, and let the Holy Spirit minister to your heart. Be filled, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and let it overflow, because this is a blessing, this is a gift, and I thank Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.